I'm Vince Pace with Silverback Heavy Duty. This is the ADB 22X caliper, the most popular caliper on the market today, used on steers and drives. We recommend that air disc brake inspections are conducted three times a year for over the road applications, and four times a year for severe service applications. Clunk test to test caliper movement. No brakes applied. Use hand pressure to push caliper slide inboard, then outboard. No tools. Use hand pressure only. Caliper should slide freely. Audible clunk should be heard. Running clearance test to test pad clearance and gap. Place feeler gauge between tappet head and backing plate to measure gap. Use metric or standard gap gauge. Acceptable clearance 0.6 to 1.1 millimeter. Tappet clutch operation test to test the free function and synchronization of tappet heads. Locate and remove the shear adapter cap. Use a 10 millimeter six point boxed end wrench to turn shear adjustment nut counterclockwise three audible clicks. Place wrench onto nut at two o'clock position and apply 30 psi of air. Wrench should rotate clockwise with every application of air. Cast wear indicator alignment test to test combined pad and rotor wear. View the relative alignment of the cast wear indicator mark in the caliper and carrier housing. If the wear indicators are aligned, pads and or rotors require replacement. Chamber removal inspection. When removing a chamber, use a 15th, 16th open-ended wrench. Inspect the mating seals, test chamber function. Visually inspect mating surface of seal for wear and heat damage. Chamber seal should be at least 120 thousandths thick. When reinstalling the chamber, apply a small amount of white lithium grease around the seal. Inspect the function of the caliper eccentric lever. Use finger pressure, push on the eccentric lever to test function. Lever should spring back easily and repeatedly. If lever does not spring back, caliper may be seized and removed from service. Guide pin horizontal travel test. Test the full travel of the guide pins and bushings. With pads removed and using hand pressure only, push the caliper outboard and mark the lower carrier unit with grease marker directly below the upper wear indicator notch. Then push the caliper inboard as far as possible and again mark the lower unit. Measure the total horizontal travel distance between the two marks. Using a digital micrometer, guide pin horizontal travel must be a minimum of 25 millimeters. If travel does not meet minimum spec, replacement of the guide pins and bushings is required. Uneven wear on pads or rotors, premature pad wear, and overheated brakes may indicate guide pins and bushings have seized. Guide pin play test indicates the wear of guide pins and bushings. Attach the magnetic dial gauge with the magnetic base on the short guide pin side of the carrier and the gauge sensor on the caliper. Reset to zero. Using the screwdriver as a pry bar, gently pry away from the carrier until the movement stops. Read the maximum measurement on the dial gauge. Guide pin play cannot exceed one millimeter. If guide pin play is greater than spec, the guide pins and bushings must be replaced. Uneven wear on pads or rotors, premature pad wear, overheated brakes or soft braking would indicate excessive wear is preventing the bushings from functioning properly. 
tap it and boot inspection using the 10 millimeter six point box end wrench. Turn the shear adjustment nut clockwise until the tappets have been fully extended to 1.75 inches. Do not exceed 1.75 inches as this will damage the caliper. Once fully extended, thoroughly inspect the boots for abrasions and tears. If the tappet boot is torn or punctured, or if the tappet shows signs of wear or corrosion, they must be replaced. Guide pin boot inspection. With the pads removed, fully extend the sliding caliper and thoroughly inspect the guide pin boots at both the short and long guide pin sides for wear, abrasion, and penetration. Remove sediments and debris that may cause damage. The guide pin boots must be free of any damage, abrasion, or punctures. If the guide pin boot is torn or punctured, it must be replaced. Inspecting air disc rotor thickness. To test rotor's minimum thickness, measure the thickness of the rotor from inboard edge to outboard edge. The discard thickness for rotors compatible with this air disc configuration is 37 millimeters. For OE design rotors, the 45 degree beveled edge indicates remaining wear. When the OE design rotor has a 90 degree edge, it has reached discard thickness and should be replaced. Inspect rotors for abnormal cracking. Radiating cracks should not measure more than one millimeter in width and should not extend longer than 75% of the rotor face. Inspect rotors for abnormal wear pattern. Groove depths of 1.5 millimeter require immediate replacement. Foreign matter can cause abnormal wearing. Inspect rotors for thermal abuse. Inspect the rotor for signs of bluing and spotting on the face or bright orange phoretic dust in the rotor vents. Check the caliper guide pins and tap it for obstruction and malfunctioning hardware. Reinspect friction for proper application. Pad removal. Using needle nose pliers, remove the spring clip and washer. Depress the pad retaining bar and remove the retaining pin and bar. Locate and remove the shear adjuster cap. Turn the shear adjuster nut counterclockwise four to five audible clicks until the pads are loose enough for removal. Installing new pads. If your caliper unit is equipped with OEM electronic wear sensors, refer to your OEM manual. Assemble by installing the pad retainer spring on top of the pad until it locks in place. Install new pads with friction facing toward the rotor. Install pad retainer bar with pin, washer, and spring clip. Advance the tappets until the pads are snug to the rotor face. No gap should exist between the rotor and pad. Turn shear adjuster nut counterclockwise three audible clicks. Reinstall the shear adjustment nut cap. Thank you for watching the ADV 22X training modules. We look forward to seeing you again in the future.